another peaceful demonstration in London appealing for change in Burma. Face photos of Aung San Suu Kyi, now in her 12th year of house arrest in Rangoon. And friends of Burma protesting over her treatment. They're fully opposed to the oppressive military regime. UK Friends of Burma also organising a powerful website to keep Burma and the rest of the world up to speed on the need for reform. This is a communication process fully supported by all members of the British Parliament. We are prepared to drop a package of measures uh, for the improvement of the Burmese economy and the condition of the people with other world leaders that would be available if Burma was prepared to move towards democracy and reconciliation in the future. The monks may have been silenced, many of them may be out of sight, but they haven't been forgotten either by people in this country or elsewhere in the world. That desire not to let Burma slip from the spotlight led to a strong debate last night in the House of Commons. All members from all parties urging the need for change. While recent protests were sparked off by popular reaction to a steep rise in fuel prices, they reflect deep frustration with the persistent lack of opportunity within Burma. They were a desperate call for a better future for a country where isolationism and repression have condemned millions to poverty. The protests were not, as the Burmese authorities have suggested, the result of external interference. A third of Burma's population today, some 17 million people, live on less than a third of a dollar a day. Public investment in health and education is amongst the lowest in the world. Yet Burma is a country with no shortage of natural or human resources. Burma should indeed stand alongside its neighbours as a prosperous, vigorous and outward-looking member of the global economy. But this vision cannot be realised without fundamental change. And change in Burma will not be easy. It will require courageous leadership which allows a wide range of Burmese voices to debate and forge a common future. Genuine reform includes reconciliation between the government and opposition groups, including the minority ethnic groups, accountable and responsible government, respect for human rights and effective economic management. At the heart of change must be a process of national reconciliation and dialogue. The regime's own roadmap cannot succeed. Only a genuine process of internal reform and reconciliation with the full involvement of the Burmese opposition will deliver stability, democracy and prosperity to the country, but it needs a great deal of pressure from the international community. The international community must seize the initiative now, when the regime may be most sensitive to international criticism and keen to deflect the consequences, to bring about the change that the people of Burma so desperately need. We must be able to say that enough is enough and work to ensure that the world never witnesses a repeat of the scenes on the streets of Rangoon last month. The people who demonstrated so bravely must have done so because they have some hope that their circumstances can change for the better. And those languishing in Burmese jails will only keep going if they have hope for the future. We in this House must help to make sure that they do not hope in vain. Yeah. Other politicians were specific in what was required now. Burma must give the UN free, full and unfettered access to all areas and peoples and these visits should be reported on and followed up by formal UN Security Council discussions to establish what, if any, progress is being made. Where no progress is made, the Security Council must act decisively and move to adopt binding sanctions including an international arms embargo and a demand for the release of all political prisoners. China, in particular, has an absolutely key role to play. Whilst we recognise the significant movement they've made already by supporting the formal United Nations Security Council statement, they also need to stand ready and willing to support the adoption of a binding Security Council resolution, should one be necessary. It is to be hoped that someone in that regime will come through and recognise that there needs to be transformation and there needs to be compromise and there needs to be dialogue. 
And just as Nelson Mandela was let out of prison in South Africa in order to have a peaceful and democratic transition, so Aung San Suu Kyi should be released from house arrest and should be placed into a petition where she, in discussion with her political colleagues, can act as the conduit and the force for transformation of this society into a pluralist, pluralistic and democratic society. That is the best way forward for Burma, and that will be a way that the international pressure for sanctions, for isolation, for targeted measures against members of the regime will be eased. If they don't do that, then the alternative will be that increasingly in the Asian countries, as well as in the rest of the world, there will be a ratcheting up of the pressures and their underlying economic problems will not be resolved. There is a way out for them if they have the courage to take it. We are starting to see some movement from the regime in Burma. We want to see that continue and getting the exact uh, right amount of pressure uh, and encouragement will be crucial to this process. I feel very strongly about this, that we have to manage this process carefully. We have to keep in close contact with uh, people in, in the region because this is an opportunity, as the Honourable Gentleman for Sutton Coalfield rightly said, that we must not miss. It has been nearly 20 years since the demonstrations in, uh, in 1988. There has not been uh, an opportunity such as this to get the international community to move forward. In London, groups of Burmese gather to hear news from home and also to add their support. Here, the Prime Minister in exile spoke of his wishes. In long term, the people inside want change, they want a freedom, they are not accepting the military. That's very clear. The people coming out on the street now in 2007 said that very clearly. And we want the international community like US, EU to take that as a people wish and tell the military very clearly they cannot go on like this. And uh, with this both uh, domestic, internal and the uh, uh, what you call international pressure, they have to change. Wide support in the UK. In Leeds, singer Katie Tunstall joined the campaign. Burma's First Lady is in, in prison, essentially, in her house, and I would like to dedicate this next song to her.